Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, you're in for a treat uh, as we talk to some amazing artists and organizers about a very cool uh, art exhibition and project. Uh, my name is Stephen Snyder. I am the Gallery and Communications Coordinator for the West Vancouver Community Arts Council, and we are so thrilled and excited to uh, host this virtual opening and artist talk for diving in the art of cleaning lakes and oceans. West Vancouver stop of the Turning Trash into Treasure Art Tour. Um, it's a wonderful uh, awareness program uh, that transforms trash from our waters into beautiful works of art. And tonight we're going to hear from uh, some of the artists and organizers who are gonna tell you all about it. So uh, while it's here in West Vancouver, it is uh, behind me, as you can see, uh, coming to you live from the Silk Purse Art Center, uh, which is on the unceded and traditional territories of the Coast Salish peoples. Um, and here in particular, that is the Squamish Nation and the Slave Tooth Nation. And we are incredibly grateful to our host nations and neighbors uh, for their stewardship of these lands since time immemorial. And we 100% recognize and support their connection to these beautiful lands and waters that surround us. Um, and these beautiful lands and waters are part of the inspiration for this fantastic exhibition. So it just opened today. And it's here at the Silk Purse until May the 28th. So please come on down and check it out. Um, you'll be blown away. Uh, we're going to have a look at uh, all the artwork in, uh, in a moment. And then we'll hear from the artists as they talk about each piece. Uh, so I am going to uh, introduce uh, everyone here with us tonight. So with us, one of the organizers of Diming In, we have Amy. Liebenberg, I'm sorry, Amy, I've always had trouble with your name. Um, Amy Liebenberg is here with us. And we have artists Monica Gewertz, Elizabeth Nankin, Kath Hughes, Michael Binkley, and Olivia Richardson. Uh, and so it's going to be pretty, pretty awesome. So if everyone just wants to uh, tell us a little bit uh, about you and your artistic background for a few seconds, that would be great. Let's start with uh, who's on my left, Monica. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm Monica Gewirtz. I'm an established mixed media artist. Um, I do mixed media with conventional and unconventional materials. In, in my practice, I use man-made materials like plastic, textiles, and natural materials like sand and gravel. I, uh, I'm both a scientist as an, and an artist. So in many of my artworks, I try to convey an environmental message. Being in this case, recycling, and sometimes it's climate change, sometimes it's carbon footprint. And I'm honored to be in this amazing show. And I invite you everybody to look at the artwork. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Monica. Uh, so let's hear from uh, Kath. Why don't you introduce yourself to everyone watching? Hi, I'm Kath Hughes. Um, I am a multidisciplinary artist and I live here on the North Shore in North Vancouver. Um, and my work takes the form of things kind of relating to a collage way of putting things together. So whether it's paper collage or assemblage or kind of some kind of more installation based things it's generally a sort of collaging of materials and I've been working with found materials for a little while now um, but this is the first project where somebody else has given me materials so uh, yeah it's I you know I'm very interested in in how how we can use waste materials and how we can transform them and how we can ha you know facilitate um, awareness and um you know, so maybe, you know, thinking about solutions, waste solutions. So, yeah. Great, thank you. Uh, Elizabeth, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Liz Nankin and I'm an interdisciplinary artist. My background is uh, for 40 years, I've been a costume designer in television and film and a puppeteer. Uh, I have done community arts and I love working with the community in creating film and puppetry. And I was asked to participate uh, in diving in 
from the Arts Council from the Hearth Gallery on Bowen Island, where I live. Uh, so my background is this whole gallery and this medium, of course, is really new to me because I'm used to crafting puppets from wood and fabric and use fabric to tell a story. Uh, so I'm usually given a narrative with a script. So I took this narrative very, very seriously and said, okay, how can I use my imagination to tell a story? and connect with people and, and so they can help participate in taking care of our land and our oceans and our water. So I pretended that um, I was given 130 pair of eyeglasses, which was very meaningful to me because um, first of all, my father-in-law uh, is an optometrist and my mother-in-law became blind from diabetes uh, um, in uh, her adulthood. So my world with sight and what is sight has been in my heart for so many years. So I said, okay, uh, eyeglasses are going to be fabric to me. So I continue to deconstruct them. And I decided to sew them together in an assemblage. My narrative was I pretended I was a scientist and thought, what if we don't clean up these waters? What would happen to the evolution of our beautiful uh, animals. So I made these morphed animals and that unfortunately you could only view them if you were to go into a museum and pull them out of a drawer. So I made scientific specimens and uh, researched what is what you do in tagging specimens. And then the sea being uh, series happened. I wanted to make a giant collage but I knew that was really hard. So I broke it down and I did four specific pieces of four separate animals. And um, I'm so grateful and uh, again, honored to be with a group of incredibly talented and inventive uh, people. I think a lot of this is about perspective and doing things differently and looking how we can live our lives differently and participate in a conscious way with our stuff, our plastics, our you know, what we do with our stuff and how we take care of it. So thank you so much. Thank you, Liz. Uh, Michael, why don't you introduce yourself? There, I've just uh, unmuted. Um, my name is Michael Binkley. And if you don't know me, um, I have been a professional, a self-represented self uh, stone sculptor uh, for 40 years. Wow. And um, uh, unfortunately, I'm not coming to you from uh, my gallery and studio in Squamish. Uh, I live in North Vancouver, but I'm actually having dinner with some friends who are also patrons. Uh, so one of my sculptures is in the background. I know that some, some of you others um, have made uh, lovely um, uh, screens or screen backgrounds of your own work. Um, I didn't. Uh, I didn't have that. Anyway, so um, uh, yeah, I. How did I get involved with this project? Um, it was actually an answer to um, an, an email invitation from uh, from Amy uh, asking if uh, we would uh, uh, if I would like to participate in the project. Uh, and I invited my niece Olivia Richardson uh, to join me in creating the piece that we did create. Um, we. Uh, the two of us, like everyone, are very uh, concerned with um, uh, that portion of our population that still doesn't know uh, how to recycle or properly dispose of uh, unwanted materials. Um, and uh, I'm, we're hoping that this uh, exhibition will uh, speak to that, uh, to that demographic. Um, our particular piece um, was uh, created from uh, the materials that we were given, which were golf balls, uh, vape cartridges, uh, raft paddles, um, uh, alcoholic uh, aluminum cans, and um, uh, what was the third one? Oh, and goggles, uh, swim goggles. So uh, uh, Olivia and I decided that we would choose uh, uh, two subjects for uh, uh, to, to be the, the the centerpiece of our of our, of our creation. That was um, the Pacific giant octopus uh, and giant kelp. Uh, so the piece that uh, we've created is uh, just over uh, Stephen's left shoulder. Um, you can just sort of see the kelp fronds. Um, anyway, I'll, um, um, I'm like everyone, very, very honored to be uh, amongst uh, a great, uh, wonderful uh, and creative uh, group of, uh, of artists. 
Um, and I'll leave a little bit of time, uh, Stephen, so that Olivia can uh, to say, say a few words. But uh, thank you for, uh, uh, for having us on tonight. Yeah, excellent. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, Olivia, please introduce yourself to everyone watching. Hello. Uh, first of all, sorry, my dog, my roommate came home, so I had to go deal with my dog. Um, <laughs> luckily, I was muted. Um, but uh, so my name's Olivia. I um, obviously got into this project because of my my uncle, Michael. Um, he asked me to join him. Um, and one of the reasons he asked me to join him is um, I went to school for fine arts and um, in, uh, majored in visual arts. So I graduated in 2016 from Kwantlen Polytechnic University. Um, and there, my last couple of years, I focused on kind of how we um, affect the environment and the nature and the animals that we, you know, live alongside. Um, so that was a big focus um, of my uh, final kind of two years. And my graduation project was actually a really big like kind of wall almost it was almost like a mural um I took photographs um of just like forest kind of backdrop and then I documented all of the trash that I found along the way uh so kind of framed the uh big uh forest photos and then I collected all the items that I documented and kind of incorporated them into my piece in somehow, um, in some way. So not quite this extent, but I did, did get into a little bit of creativeness um, in terms of, I was asked to go back for an alumni show in, uh, I believe it was in 2019 is when it opened. Um, so that was for a few months and that was back at the university that recently renovated and everything, the fine arts department. So actually the it did a similar idea where I documented the items I found but I made little sculptures out of the garbage in the trash and uh using a pedestals um presented them in front of the backdrop of the the documented uh, photos so uh knowing that that's something that I focused on um my uncle asked me to join this so so it's a little bit different in terms that I'm photography based and haven't really done sculpture a lot, but it was a great learning experience and definitely fun to be a part of. Excellent. Thank you, Olivia. It's been great uh, hearing from all of you about your sort of artistic journeys. And it's a bit of a common thing that this is new to a lot of the artists participating uh, in this exhibit, you know, coming at this, using found objects to create work. It's pretty cool. Um, so next up, we've got Amy. Amy, if you would be so kind as to introduce yourself, and since you're kind of the brains of this, um, if you could then tell us about uh, the nature of diving in and what it's all about, that would be fantastic. Yeah, you bet. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> um, so I am also a practicing artist, and I, up until recently, was the executive director in the Squamish Arts Council. Um, and uh, I'm currently studying Indigenous community, community planning at the University of British Columbia. So I'm talking to you all from the uh, traditional territories of the Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh and Musqueam, also known as Vancouver. Um, so yeah, this, uh, this project, it was um, kind of a brainchild of myself and, uh, and Henry Wang, who is a scuba diver and a friend of mine. Um, we dive together actually uh, in a volunteer group called Divers for Cleaner Lakes and Oceans. And I've dived with Henry and the gang uh, in saltwater and freshwater and picked up a variety of bizarre trash over the years. And um, Henry called me at the beginning of last year <clears throat> in 2021 and said, hey, you, you do art stuff. Do you want to make some art out of the trash we pick up? <laughs> and uh, it was January 2021, I um, had just gone through a year of crazy COVID um, festivals, you know, we still did all of our programming, and then some 
during 2020 um, somehow. And I, you know, 2021 was my year of not taking on more than I needed to. Um, and I, I relayed this to Henry. I said, it sounds lovely, Henry, but it also sounds like a lot of work and I'm, I'm just not interested. Um, but of course, within five minutes, I'd committed to uh, not only getting involved, but roping in all of my other poor nonprofit arts council friends. Um, no, I'm kidding. They, they loved the idea. I pitched it to the Sea to Sky Arts Council uh, Alliance, which is made up of five arts councils. So Pemberton, Whistler, Squamish, Bowen Island, and Lions Bay. And um, we'd actually had an idea to have a, an environmentally themed touring art show go through our communities. Um, and then it was derailed by COVID. So when I told them, you know, this just sort of seemed at a, at like our second chance to to bring about this idea. Um, and then because Henry lives in North Van um, and we already had an artist on board, Corey Creed, um, we just, it was all, it was quite natural to, to invite North Vancouver and West Vancouver, our sister cities. And, um, you know, of course they were just interested in the idea because it's a, it's a super interesting idea. Turning uh, trash into art is not a new idea. It's been done for, for many years. Unfortunately, there's a lot of trash to go around. Um, but this project is quite unique because the trash is from underwater. Um, most of the time, the projects I see um, is trash from shorelines or from the surface of the water, like the big garbage patch. Um, but what I thought was quite special and an interesting opportunity in this project is to talk about the fact that, you know, when you look at our beautiful, pristine shorelines and lakes, there's a lot um, that you're not seeing. And uh, actually, I spoke to a woman at the, sh at, at the show in Squamish recently, and she said, even in Canada, even in these beautiful pristine lakes, there's garbage. And I said, yeah. <laughs> and so what we're doing is we've surfaced a problem that people often don't think about um, because the waste sinks. So um, we recruited artists from our communities. Um, I asked Michael because I'd visited his studio and I'd seen, you know, the beautiful ways that he is able to shape these very rigid pieces of material. And I thought, what, what would Michael do with a bunch of garbage? You know, I, I just got to know. And then I also invited Karen, um, who does textile arts from upcycled materials. So she seemed like a good fit. Um, and then each arts council chose, you know, a fantastic roster of artists. And um, so we hosted a series of cleanups last year in all the communities. And um, so we did shoreline cleanups with volunteers and then the divers were in lakes or ocean sites. And, uh, you know, in West Van, we did a couple of cleanups. We had some pretty interesting garbage that we found. Um, we, most of the time we find uh, cans and bottles bottles in the ocean because bottles are really heavy and they don't roll away with the tides. Um, but there are cans present. They just either float away or they go, the, the ocean currents push them deeper. Whereas in the lakes, we find cans because there's nowhere for them to go. So we call that party trash. We find a lot of party trash, but in West Bend, we also found a lot of um, antique trash, which was quite cool. And on Bowen too, I found, a, oh, it's not here, somewhere in my house, a really cool bottle from 1905. Um, but then we find a lot of other stuff too, um, incidental trash, sunglasses, wallets, things that people don't actually mean to lose, cell phones. Um, but then we find, you know, of course the party trash, and then we find a lot of tires um, coming off of docks and um, boat rudders and, and that sort of thing. So we had, uh, and shopping carts, endless shopping carts. <laughs> so we had uh, quite a time last year cleaning up in the communities and it was so interesting because we thought, my goodness, what are the artists going to do with this? You know, the, oh, that's what all the divers and the cleanup um, people kept saying, what are the divers, uh, what are the artists going to make with all these golf balls? What are they going to do with all these cans? You know, and it was so fun for us to kind of imagine in the hands of an artist, what is this going to become? And uh, I know some of uh, some of you guys came out to our cleanups. Liz uh, had the most amazing, um, it was pouring buckets in, in Bowen Island that day. And she'd made this fabulous top hat and tutu and covered it in plastic. And uh, so she was helping us on the beach pull trash out. And it was a really beautiful community experience. Um, and then, so we handed the trash over last year in, uh, in the winter. Uh, the artists came up to Squamish and uh, we had sort of an event where the, the trash was masked in burlap sacks. 
and they didn't know what they were getting. They all stood around in a, in a circle and we said, okay, open, you know, and the artists looked and wow, what have we got here? Um, golf balls or paddles or cans or sunglasses. <clears throat> And then off they went into their studios and worked their magic. And as the artists do, they transformed the trash into, um, into some pretty significant, meaningful pieces of art. And with the exception of, I think, two pieces, they almost all are ocean themed or water themed, which is amazing. Um, I think everybody was really thoughtful in how they channeled the idea and the problem. And, you know, I mean, sitting with these artifacts for months and working with them, I think you can't help but but ponder on the, on the actual issue. Um, and so the art is just absolutely incredible. People are so moved by it, especially kids, you know, they just get it right away. And so it's just been, I, I mean, I couldn't believe it. I, I was absolutely blown away when I saw the art. I knew it would be good, but I didn't know it'd be this good. And, uh, and the impact that it's having is massive. So I'm just so proud of everybody. Yeah, it's, it's been a fantastic experience uh, being a part of this project. Uh, it's been wonderful being at the cleanups and seeing, uh, you know, just people from the community coming out and, and, and doing their part and, and, and interacting with the divers and learning all about what, what the divers do and then seeing progress shots of the artists as, as they're working um, and then seeing the final pieces. It's, it's pretty stunning. And uh, today was the first day the exhibit opened here at the Silver Person in West Van, and uh, everyone who came in was just floored. And uh, you know, it was there wasn't a, a person who just stopped by for like a quick look through the gallery and leave. Everyone stayed for an extended period of time to just take it all in. It was really, it's been very special, a very special experience. I would like to add something. I went to there uh, this year, starting last year. There's been three dives on Bowen Island, and I really would like to speak to the volunteer divers because they work tremendously hard they are truly volunteers they've got they get the boats they get the barges they fill their tanks up and you know there were you know i'm talking about hi i'm in the pouring rain or it's very cold and i'm in you know plastic you know rain gear they're in the water it's murky it's freezing they have very degrees of equipment and it's all volunteer and they, you know, not do one dive at a time, they'll do two dives at a time. And it is stunning in the sense of what comes up. Um, it's also, you know, you're bringing up uh, debris, as we're calling it, it's not necessarily trash, but it's debris. It's also parts of boats. It's parts of homes. It's, um, it's structure that is also created a ecosystem for other uh, animals to live on. And so, you know, we needed, you know, cause we we're all having this discussion, like, wait a moment, here's a sea star condo with about 30 sea stars on it. You know, do we, do we disrupt this because they're creating a new ecosystem? And we have this discussion saying, no, we have to mindfully take these animals off and replace them safely back into the water. Um, you know, I know in Bowen Island and certainly around Howe Sound, I, you know, it's become a UNESCO site. We're trying to protect the, um, the glass coral. Uh, a lot of what came up on Bowen is also crab traps. You know, how do we catch our food? And what happens with the process of catching our food? And that becomes the crab trap, becomes debris but it also becomes a new ecosystem. And again, we had to like really mindfully touch and take off mollusks and you know, and I'm working with the divers and they're educating not only me as an artist, but the public came out, you know, kids and, you know, it, it was multi-generational people that came out. And the other uh, volunteers are what happens to this debris. It's all mindfully considered. You know, this is a scientific study to help the environment. So all the debris comes up, it's laid out on tarps as far as you can see, depending on how long they're diving for. It's categorized. So everything is categorized on the tarps. Everything is logged. 
that means written down exactly what it is, the description, then everything is weighed. And then it is mindfully trucked off the island or some of it can be recycled. You know, we have a recycling center. I was able to take some, I mean, you know, I was able to take some of the debris with me um, to work on and work with in community with um, creating art with some um, art students. But that, you know, it's not, it's a huge endeavor that takes a lot of soul and a lot of work with a, a, a community that connects very deeply with each other. And I wanted to acknowledge how many people do that. It's stunning. Yeah, it, it really is remarkable. Yeah, how everyone's come together and what, what they've been able to, to accomplish. It's, it's pretty impressive. So um, everyone watching, if you have any questions or anything you wanna share, uh, you can drop those in the chat and we will get to that uh, later, uh, later in the program. Uh, so for now, we are going to take a quick tour of the exhibition as it's uh, in the space here because it's gonna look different everywhere it goes um, while it's on this journey. Um, same artwork, just different configurations. It's pretty cool. So we're just gonna pull that up right now. Awesome. So as you start uh, coming into the gallery off of our seaside uh, entrance. Uh, this is what you, this is what you see. We've got this piano in the middle of the room, but uh, we work around it. So first up, we get a, this great piece by Corey Creed, uh, and she's representing uh, North Band. Again, uh, like many of you were saying, um, most people probably know Corey for her, her paintings, her really lovely uh, floral and, and scenic paintings. Um, but now this is all, there's pottery and all this mixed media uh, in here. Like, like things you would catch in a net. Ah, now we move on to Kat's piece. It's, it's pretty fantastic. Um, Kath is our, our West Van uh, repping artist. We'll get to hear a bit more in depth about this a little bit later. But Kath, this is, this is a pretty, pretty neat piece. It's pretty stunning to, uh, once you figure out what it is, it's pretty amazing. Yes, and then we move on to Michael and, and Olivia's Awesome piece, one of, one of the big pieces. There's quite a few big pieces in this show. Yeah, and I have to say just the, the dimensions of a lot of this work is, is, pretty, is pretty interesting to look at. Um, we tend to get a lot of 2D artwork here at the gallery, so having, work with so much depth and dimension is, is pretty fun to look at. Uh, and then Monica, Monica's piece is up next. Monica is representing uh, Lion's Bay. Yeah, lots of there's the, the artwork in this exhibit is very, very layered. There's lots of layers happening to explore. Ah, and then we get, uh, excuse me, then we've got this great piece um, by Joe Sove. Uh, Joe is representing Whistler. Very cool, this fish made of scrap metal. Uh, and the waves, I'll, they're made up of a lot of things, um, but it's a lot of uh, aluminum cans. There's a lot of aluminum cans in this exhibit. <laughs> but just seeing how it's, it's so, it's the sharp metal, um, but how it still looks like waves, like, like splashing water, it's pretty cool. 
And they've got some of uh, Liz's piece. Liz has, has a number of pieces in the exhibit kind of following this theme. They're pretty, they're pretty fun. All the goggles and glasses to look like those, those specimens. And then our next piece is from uh, Paula Lopez. It's really a really striking uh, and large piece. Made primarily, again, from aluminum cans. Yeah, and as a as number of you were saying, there's a, there's a lot of paddles and, and beach and, and boating equipment that was found that was used. So that was, that's interesting to see the things that you would see in the water that don't, that don't leave it, that unfortunately sometimes get lost in it. And then there's another one of uh, Liz's fantastic creatures. Yeah, and then just a different view of the, the next wall. Uh, so our next piece is, uh, is this uh, fascinating piece by Sarah Haxby, where uh, all of these, these bullet casings uh, that were salvaged that she's transformed into this, this fish. That was a surprise. I don't know how many of you were surprised by, by the number of, of bullets and bullet casings. Um, Corey's piece uses a number of, of shotgun shell casings as well. It's, that was very surprising. But in this very cool resin, uh, again, kind of looks like a specimen. Yes, and then we get this, another large piece, this one from uh, Karen, excuse me, Karen Yarmkovich. And lots of, lots more glasses and goggles. It's very interesting um, to see how people have used their materials, whether they're keeping it whole or trying to manipulate it to look like something else or whether, how, how much of an illusion uh, artists have chosen to create with their pieces. It's, it's pretty fascinating to think about that. And then we get Arnie Goodman's, very, very interesting piece. Again, a lot of aluminum here to make this sort of semi-abstract, uh, it's called the Silvery Seas, kind of a seascape. And then we get this uh, piece uh, from Carrie Lopez. They're very colorful, very three-dimensional work of this underwater scene, transforming all of this, all of this uh, river floats and goggles and things into, into undersea life. And everyone watching this video does not do these amazing works of art justice. You really have to come in and, and see them in person to get the full effect and, and just really marvel at what's been done and, and uh, really feel the impact of, of what these artists are saying. And all of this artwork um, is actually available uh, in an online auction, um, which is very great proceeds. Uh, 
we're split between the artists um, and uh, and diving in because uh, we've got some there's some other cool projects uh, related to this coming up. So if you're interested, if you want uh, a piece or you just want to support these artists in this program, uh, you can uh, make a bid on these very cool works of art. Um, more information about diving in and everything related to it uh, can be found in the link in the description of this video. Awesome. So that was cool. It was cool to see everything. Um, and now we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna see a little bit more of each artist's work. We're gonna take a little bit more of an in-depth tour into uh, into everyone's piece. So uh, I'm just seeing who I've got. Yes, let's. Uh, Okay, I've got Kath, I've got yours all pulled up. So uh, how about you go first? I'll bring up, I'll bring up your piece. Lovely, thanks, Stephen. Um, so my piece is called Ghost Nets and um, it is fashioned from uh, beverage cans, uh, aluminum beverage cans. Um, I really wanted to really kind of transform them in such a way that they weren't camouflaged. They weren't, um, uh, they weren't so transformed that you couldn't recognize what they were. There was, there's still, you know, you get up close and you can see the printings on them. Um, but I did want it to be, you know, that the manipulation of them was, was very much part of the mystery, I guess. A little bit of mystery um so yeah i mean the process was kind of uh, a little bit arduous because you know i got all these cans and they were full of silt and dirt and you know they were literally were from from you know the um the beds of lakes um and uh so there was quite a lot of kind of clean up <laughs> cleaning up and then cutting and my hands went through quite a ordeal <laughs> Um, and I came up with this, um, this uh, kind of method of making these long strips and um, twisting them into these kind of long, um, these long kind of cords. And um, I came up with the idea of wanting to work with nets quite early on. And um, I wanted to really kind of highlight, you know, an issue, a particular issue. Uh, to do with ocean trash. Um, so um, I, I read a little, up a little bit about ghost nets and ghost gear in general. And this is um, when fishing, fishing gear and fishing nets that are no longer in use are still present in the ocean. And they're just kind of floating around and they continue to trap animals. Um, so if you go online, you'll see many horrible pictures of, you know, turtles trapped in these things. Um, I didn't want to illustrate that. I just wanted them to be these kind of ghostly presences that are kind of almost on that cusp between beautiful and deadly. Um, so, and they are quite sharp. So um, yeah, it's kind of like reminded me of barbed wire and that kind of thing as well, because they're made out, fashioned out of this metal. Um, and then I, the goggles seem to me like little, um, little um, floats on the, on the, uh, the nets. Um, so yeah, and then I, it, I put it together with a base which is made with collage and or um, encaustic paint, which is a wax-based paint. Um, so yeah, it's quite layered. Um, and I think that's I think that's all I have to say about it right now. Oh, other than to say, yeah, ghost nets are a huge problem. Um, I read that they make up uh, nearly half of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. So, I mean, they're a huge issue in, in ocean waste. Um, so something to draw awareness to. Yeah. Thank you, Kath. Thank you for sharing. I, I was curious about the title um, when it came in. That's, thank you for sharing that term and all that information. That's really important to know. And uh, amazing work on transforming those cans into the nets. That's, <laughs> Uh, I cannot imagine what your what your fingers had to go through <laughs> to do that, but it's 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 a pretty stunning yeah. They were pretty beaten up. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's wonderful. Thank you so much for that. 
Uh, next, uh, next we've got Monica. Let me pull up your fantastic piece. So this painting is called SOS, which stands for Save Our Seas, but also Save Our Sirens. And it was made to raise awareness about the pollution that accumulates on our lakes and oceans and the urgent need to do more recycling and to bring awareness on the threat that plastic pollution in our oceans and lakes has and how it is a deadly threat to marine life, humans, and sirens. Every year, plastics kill over 130,000 marine mammals and millions of seabirds and fish. And its associated microplastics also threaten the health of both animals and humans. I was given uh, 15 pounds of lures with weights and some beverage cans and some goggles, but mainly was the lures. So I think I got the prettiest trash. Um, but like Kathy's, there was a lot of work that we had to, I had to cut all the lures, the hooks and the weights. And I was just mesmerized how many of these lures get lost uh, by fishermen. So in, in the composition, I wanted to uh, make it look how it would look like when a diver goes in. First, it looks very pretty, a nice scenery, tropical waters, blue waters, a sky with clouds. And as you go into the depth of the water, instead of just seeing fish and coral and algae, uh, in a clean sand, you start seeing all this trash. So it's a bit of a beauty and sinister. So the beauty is above the water and the sinister is below. And when far away, it looks nice, but as you get close and you see the mermaids all tangled up with the nets, as Kathy mentioned, the, the ghost nets and discarded bottle holders and single use plastics, and of course the hooks and the, the caps. So I tried to portray that, that's what, what's down there. Um, I tried to manipulate some of the material. Um, there's little seahorses that were made with single use plastic and wire. And there's a little hermit crab down below with uh, instead of using a shell is using a discarded cap because I wanted to attract also the younger generation to, to art and to, to the message. Uh, for me, what struck me the most of what I've seen and what I've read is the amount of trash that is purposely discarded. The tires, the shopping carts, like lures and sunglasses, okay, you know, the odd can, it's accidental, but a lot of it is purposely. And for me, that was a real hit in the stomach. Um, for me, transforming trash into beautiful art that is unique and eye-catching, um, it is my intention that this painting and, and what the exhibit will be visually and tactile stimulating, thought-provoking, and send the two key messages that will be easy to understand by different age groups and cultures. The urgent need to reduce the amount of plastic waste in our water bodies by recycling and also using less practice in our daily lives and remind us that the future of our water bodies in our hands. And I just want to add a third message that I just thought of the recently is we have to send a message to the industry, the one that produces all these materials that are single purposely used that are not decomposable, that we want change. So 
And I also use some man-made materials to, to also bring it, to make it a bit more realistic. And uh, there's many, many layers here. I tallied up is over 60 hours of work in this painting, artwork. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing, Monica. And again, thank you for reiterating all those points about how this is, this is in our hands and, and there's something we can do, uh, we can do about this. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you, Monica. Thank you for sharing. That was, that was wonderful. And there's, there's a lot of layers in that piece. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so Michael and Olivia, we will pull up uh, your joint uh, effort. And Steve, people can yeah. touch my painting. I forgot to mention that. Oh, great. <laughs> that's, that's interesting because most of the time it's like, oh, please don't touch. And, and definitely some pieces are much, much, much more delicate. Uh, than others, and some are actually uh, potentially a little sharp. Um, but yeah, no, that's good note, Monica. Thank you. All right, Michael and Olivia, take it away. Olivia, do you want, do you want me to go first? Sure. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, <clears throat> being a three-dimensional artist, uh, working uh, in stone, granite, marble, jade, limestone. Uh, my immediate reaction to uh, wanting to create a piece for this uh, exhibition was to do a sculpture. Uh, but I was uh, quickly uh, smacked on the back of the hand saying, no, it can't be a three-dimensional piece on a pedestal because uh, not a lot of the uh, venues that this exhibition is gonna be in uh, can accommodate uh, three-dimensional work. So we had to uh, make sure that it was uh, something that could be hung on the wall. Um, but uh, wanting to sort of press on, uh, Mich uh, Olivia and I decided we would like to do a high relief uh, sculptural piece that would hang. Um, and um, I just, I had it in the back of my head. I really, I, I love um, the animal of the octopus. Um, I, they're very highly intelligent creatures, um, but being as intelligent as they are, they. Uh, they don't know the difference between uh, trash and, uh, and food sources. So um, uh, we wanted to, to create a piece that, um, that, that sort of had a little bit of uh, poking, a little bit of fun, but also uh, had a serious message. Um, the title of our, of, our, of our art piece is uh, Thank You, But I Don't Need Goggles simply because uh, octopus uh, and any under, underwater creature has the ability to see clearly without the use of, uh, of goggles or, uh, or swim masks. Uh, uh, and um, certainly uh, humans do need these. So um, we incorporated um, our golf balls to be the coral um, on the bottom of the ocean. And uh, we did this in a way so that uh, I, I I tr tried to choose the, uh, the, the golf ball skins um, to be and, and arrange them in a way that they would be almost like pixels. So if you squinted, uh, you could sort of, sort of see a three-dimensional um, uh, aspect appear uh, from, the, uh, from, from the coral um, on the bottom of the ocean. Um, we kept the yellow golf balls um, as three-dimensional pieces to use as the stems for the, uh, for the giant, uh, the uh, sort of the giant kelp um, and sculpt, I, I had to invent um, the, the way to, to try and create um, a three-dimensional mantle um, and uh, skirt um, out, of the, uh, out of the aluminum cans uh, for the octopus. And um, I'll let Olivia um, talk about uh, how she accomplished making the, uh, the arms for the octopus. But um, all of it was put onto a six foot by four foot uh, piece of uh, plywood. And uh, we incorporated uh, res resin with color to uh, emulate the, um, uh, the sense of, of ocean water. Uh, and because we didn't have enough materials to make eight legs, uh, we painted four of the eight legs uh, into, the, into the background. 
and I'll hand it over to you, Olivia, to uh, talk about the, uh, the the four tentacles that you that we that we did create out of uh, three dimensional um, objects. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> I spent a lot of our time dealing with the legs, and we um, we had a bunch of uh, paddles. So what I was tasked with was. Um, cutting up all of the paddles, like the, the handles and everything into these little pieces. And you can kind of see it here. They're about the same size pieces. Um, so we could bend them into different uh, shapes um, as a octopus's tentacles would. So as you can see, um, Obviously the longer ones are up higher. And then as we got lower down, I tried to bend them in a way that kind of curved. So we, all of these are actually on long, long rods, like thin rods of um, that, that we, uh, that my uncle uh, had. Um, so they're all kind of strung along there and each one is glued together with epoxy. So a lot of my time was just standing there <laughs> and uh, making sure that they were gluing, gluing together and staying. Um, but it, I just kind of had my headphones in with a podcast or music. Um, and then at the end we saved the little, um, I don't know what you'd call those, but the little bits that open up the cans as um, you can see and put those on kind of as like the suctions. Um, and as my uncle touched on, we uh, came up with the idea of the octopus and the kelp, just because uh, they're both um, native to BC oceans. And we know ours wasn't necessarily, we don't know where which body of water our trash came from, but we wanted to touch on an ocean theme or a water theme and this being native to uh, the Pacific Ocean, we wanted to kind of encapsulate something that was close to home. Um, and yeah, we were giving, given an array of material to work with. And one thing that we both agreed on as well is we wanted to keep it quite raw in terms of the, we didn't want to paint over it or hide what it was. Uh, just so you can, you know, the viewer is able to see, oh, like that is made out of trash, you know, so it's not necessarily the made to look beautiful or specifically, but we wanted to make the viewer aware that this was made from trash. This did come from an ocean. And these are kind of the elements that would be affected um, by people just throwing their trash in the ocean intentional or not um, as was touched on earlier some of it is unintentional but the party trash as we um, called it um, more times less is is intentional just because people don't want to bring with them what they brought out so yeah I don't know if you want to add anything else but I, I'll just just finish up. That's great, Olivia. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you for uh, t touching on some of those other topics. But I did want to sort of reiterate what Olivia said. Um, our decision was to not make this completely beautiful, but to keep it raw, um, so that uh, uh, that the viewer does understand that um, that this is that the artwork has been made from uh, from from trash. Whether it has, uh, I think, I think. Um, you, what you touched on, Olivia, is, is correct. Um, I, I don't think anyone purposely throws their swim goggles overboard. Um, those are sort of accidental um, uh, misplacement of of, uh, of our uh, of our possessions. Um, but certainly, uh, golf balls did not um, uh, did did not magically um, make their way out off a bad a, a bad a bad shot off off a golf course. Um, they were purposely knocked into the ocean. Um, uh, uh, aluminum cans were purposely um, deposited in the ocean. So, uh, and the and the vape cartridges, which are the tips of the um, uh, the octopus's tentacles, 
those were purposely disposed of uh, irresponsibly. So um, I think that, yeah, that's uh, the fact that we did decide to have a, um, uh, a, a piece that was, um, uh, that was raw um, and, and bare and, uh, and exposed uh, so that the, um, uh, the trash that we used is recognizable. So I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Michael and Olivia, for, for sharing uh, your process and your inspirations. It's, it is important to remember that uh, this definitely not just only affects us, but uh, this situation of all this trash in our waters affects the animals, right? Like the octopus you were saying, they don't know what they can and can't eat and how that, uh, how that can be damaging for them. Um, and ultimately for us, because if it's uh, an animal that we consume, um, we're taking in all of those toxins and things as well. Yeah, and uh, all of the, uh, the, the decisions that everyone's making as, as how they, how they uh, do they mask the pieces of, of debris or don't they? It's really interesting hearing each of you uh, talk about your decisions and, and, and how to treat it. Uh, so next we've got, uh, we've got Liz. Liz has a, a couple of pieces in the show. Um, I don't know if there was a specific one you wanted to, uh, to bring um. up. You could do the sea, I mean, the seahorse. Awesome. And the fish beaver, you know, it, and I can speak to all of them, but I think, you know, for time wise, just to talk to those two. Oh, no. um, so, so this, this process, uh, like I said, was very personal to me. And um, number one, I went back to my roots. Um, I knew that I wanted to uh, sew them the application because we were told that if the pieces don't sell, they need to be deconstructed and recycled. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna sew it. And sewing is what I do. So um, I approached it as first, I just laid them all out. And I did what makes me happy since I was a child and that is I collect, normally I collect nature, I collect shells, I collect rocks, I collect acorns and I, I group them. Uh, I've done this as a, a, you know, from a kid to I'm in my sixties now. So what I did is I laid out all these, um, I think it was 135 pairs of eyeglasses. I still have some left over. And then, and Squamish, um, I had to leave early. And so I grabbed goggles, oddly enough, and I was given a couple of wars so it was again about seeing. So I classified them all by color and shape and, and size. And like I said, I was pretending I was a scientist. And then so I could see what I had. Then I, I originally started with an idea of, I want to make a giant sea monster. And then I thought, well, wait a moment. I have too many of the same elements and I need to create something like uh, the, to honor uh, hang on a wall. So I started to play around and I just would mash up and say, okay, you know, what does this look like? What does that look like? I worked very big on the floor, actually on the floor of my, I took them all down to Los Angeles in Ziploc bags on the floor of my dad's living room. Um, I had to go down and visit. And then I, I started making sketches on uh, big pieces of paper of uh, animals that I, I like, sea life I like. Uh, I was going to do a giant aquarium scene, and I ended up sketching about a ten foot by ten foot scene with you know turtles and rays and and uh, various fishes. And then I needed to uh, scale down my idea because it was just too massive. And I decided I didn't have uh, the wherewithal to sew in mass that I needed to use each canvas as sort of like an embroidery frame. So I um, uh, scaled down my ideas, put up the big pieces of paper around uh, uh, again on the floor when I got back to Bowen. And um, this particular one is a giant <laughs> uh, uh, seahorse, which seahorses are normally so tiny and delicate. So I went back to, okay, this is gonna be a specimen in a museum and people are gonna see it. So I said, what can I do to create a graphic that could be, let's say, pulled out of a drawer of the museum, a natural history museum. 
and how would uh, the future humanity understand what lived in our oceans before they were completely destroyed. Um, I also was working on a theme of sense of home. Um, uh, you know, our waters have no boundaries. I mean, we live in our homes and we have boundaries with a roof and walls, whereas our waters have no boundaries. They touch everyone and they belong to everyone. And so I had this sense of home. And so each title of the sea being specimen is actually uh, an old address of one of my homes I've lived in. Um, so I, I forgot what <laughs> this one is. It might be 823 Sea Being Specimen 83. That was my home address in LA. It's just something that connected me to a sense of home and where home is. I also in um, the tagging is the longitude and latitude, which is uh, specifically done by scientists when they find a, a, an animal or creature. And then I wanted to make it personal for everyone. So I picked a, a bay uh, a location on Bowen, Alder Cove, Mannion Bay, Tunstall Bay, and I incorporated into that. I wanted here with the, um, talking about patina. Okay, so I classified all these particular shapes and I wanted to keep as much grime and patina on uh, the elements of eyeglasses as possible. And so I, uh, what I do is I lay out and I um, paper tape everything down. And then I pick up each individual piece and I usually make two to three small Dremel tool holes in each one. And then I sew them with, I wanted to use fishing line um, to have the connection to ocean and capture. And how I do it is I take a, I, I sew one stitch, I turn it over, I make a knot and I sew another stitch. So it's hours and hours and hours and hours of work. I started sewing these in January and probably finished them <laughs> the week before they were delivered. <laughs> um, I have in this particular one, of course, you see a paddle from a, a, you know, a kayak, the goggles, fish goggles, and underneath the fish goggles is actually something I found on Bowen. And that was, um, uh, it's an orange, I was dealing with rust and orange. And uh, it's a, a reflector from a street that actually ended up on our shoreline. Um, my, my pieces, I wanted to make them tactile. They're indestructible, which also says, this doesn't break down. I'm also speaking to and conjuring my mother-in-law who is blind. And I'm currently working with um, someone, uh, Alex Jorgensen, who is, uh, uh, wasn't born blind, but lost his sight through his life. And he has two nonprofit organizations on Bowen. And I, by the time this, uh, this show gets to Bowen, which I think is November, uh, we're working on how art can be accessible to everyone. I, I, you know, this is about art activism on many levels. Um, art activism is that what, what, what can we say as artists to help enlighten and tell a story and to affect change? Uh, I'm talking to art students and said, look, you know, every thought you have and every time you have the courage to put something out there, uh, in a, uh, a forum of a gallery or a public space, you you're, you're have the opportunity to say something and to continue to say something that's meaningful. I mean, art is, you know, art, why do we make art? We, we have to, uh, you know, as artists, we're, that's our voice. It's our, our way of communicating. And this is a way to touch people to say, look, um, these eyeglasses, which I looked at 130 pair of eyeglasses and I realized the amount of money that I had in commerce in my garage studio was astounding. I had dollar store glasses to absolutely designer glasses that were costing $500 a pair. You know, there's Pradas and Ray-Bans and, you know, I will rattle off to like sports glasses that you pick up in the, in, in the dollar store. And I was thinking, the amount of 
time and energy and thought and work that goes into a, a pair of eyeglasses that we need to see is quite astounding and a lot of money. And this also reminds people that um, if you see something, don't, don't turn away. It's so easy to bend down, pick it up, and participate in a very simple way that goes a long way. And so, you know, there were so many themes that I was working with with each piece, and I wanted to simply say, okay, I, I want to work with something graphic and visually um, simple. It, it, I, 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 I wanted to hone my crazy brain full of a ton of ideas and challenge myself to work with line and shape very simply. So um, that was my approach. I also used house paint from my house. I used layers and layers of house paint, which also reconnected me to a sense of home. And um, that I also wanted to create art that not only can be touched by all, but can be turned. Uh, this is about perception. I mean, I used I'm, I'm dyslexic, and so I, I, I read everything backwards. <laughs> and um, so many times uh, for me to understand what I'm doing, especially when I'm creating, is I turn it upside down in so many different ways. And so this is also a lesson in perception that, you know, these pieces can be turned different ways and see what, you know, the viewer can look at it and find new things in it and find new shapes and... Uh, it will continue hopefully to enlighten and tell a story. Excellent. Thank you, Liz, for sharing all that, sharing the process uh, that you've gone through and the, uh, just the ideas. Again, uh, Thank you. it's all about seeing, right? Like that's what this exhibition is about. It's about perception and awareness and, and giving people the opportunity to think about the waters around us and, and how, they, how they interact with it and how they, how they can affect it. Uh, which is pretty uh, pretty amazing. Um, that's another thing when you do, when you come to see the show, uh, we've got all this information about things you can do uh, to help our waters uh, because yeah, it's it's something as Liz said, um, it's easy as picking up a little piece of trash you see, um, or you can go as far as joining uh, a group like uh, Divers for Cleaner Lakes and Oceans who uh -huh. uh, salvaged all of this wonderful uh, material for these artists to use. Um, or you can write to your local government. Um, you can reduce the amount of single-use plastics uh, you consume. There's, there's plenty of things you can do. And, and hopefully coming in and seeing this exhibition will, uh, will spark some of those ideas and spark some creativity in, in everyone who comes to see it. So I think, uh, I think that's it. I think we're ready to wrap up uh, this, this virtual opening and artist talk for uh, diving in. Uh, the Art of Cleaning Lakes and Oceans. Thank you, uh, everyone who joined us, all of our amazing artists, and, and Amy, one of the amazing organizers. And thank you, everyone who came out to watch uh, and to listen to this fantastic conversation. Uh, you can come see the exhibit here in West Vancouver at the Silk Purse Arts Center, uh, right on the Ambleside waterfront uh, from now until May the 28th. Uh, so please come on in. See. Actually, um, tomorrow night, uh, Thursday, uh, the uh, fifth, um, we're open a little bit later um, for the first Thursday's art walks. So if you can't make it during regular gallery hours, you can come make it then. And if you can't make it to West Van, check out the Diving In website, link in the description for all the other tour dates where you can come and see this amazing art. So again, thank you so much to all of our amazing artists and Amy and for everyone watching um, for sharing uh, this amazing this amazing night and this amazing artwork and event with us. So I hope you all have a wonderful evening and uh, come on and see the show. Take Thank care, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.